We are almost a halfway through our Daniel Hefos lecture series on an aspect of the nation building course themed the remarkable historical examples of successful nation building projects, operations, or efforts around the globe. This is the part four. The focus of today's lecture is on the United States of America as a most recognized, remarkable, historical example of a successful nation building effort. At the end of the day, you should be able to tell why the USA is recognized as one of the remarkable nation building efforts around the globe. Again, you should be able to indicate some of the lessons which could be learned from the story of the US. Dearest Nation Builders Association of the Continent of Africa, Mbaka and Binyon, I welcome each and every one of you to today's session. And may God bless you for your willingness to go through this lecture series, not only as an academic exercise, but also as an event leading to you being dutifully established as a key player in the ongoing process of building the continent of Africa into a venerable nation. And for that matter, a nation which will seek to be second only to the kingdom of God, the Yah or Jah Almighty. Great gratitude and joy. Ladies and gentlemen, according to those who know the country well enough, United States of America is a country which you can find in North America and that it is one of the federal republics around the world. The federation or alliance which led to the formation of USA was made up of 50 states. In other words, the term federal republic is used to describe nations or nation states such as the United States of America under consideration, as well as Nigeria and Germany, which were created through a federation or alliance of several states with a republican form of government. Note also that they say that essentially the literal meaning of the term republic when formally employed to reference a form of government or an arrangement of governance is that the nation and for that matter the country involved is governed by elected representatives and by an elected leader like a president instead of a monarch. Furthermore, note that an elected representative may be members of parliament, senate, etc. Indeed, the government of the USA is a presidential constitutional republic and liberal democracy type with three distinct divisions, legislature, executive, and judiciary. It has a bicameral national legislature, which is made of the House of Representatives, a lower house based on population, and the Senate, an upper house with equal representation for each state. Each of the states and the various territories of the country have been granted substantial autonomy with 
a political culture promoting liberty, equality, individualism, personal autonomy, and uh, limited government. What do you know as the meaning of the terminologies liberty, equality, individualism, personal autonomy, and uh, limited government? Do well to present your answer shortly after this lecture. Ladies and gentlemen, we are also informed that apart from the widely reported 48 contaminous states which populate the middle latitude of the North American continent, the United States comprises of the states of Alaska at the northwestern extreme of North America, in addition to the island state of Hawaii in the mid-Pacific Ocean. Have you heard the contaminous states share borders to the north with Canada, to the east with the Atlantic Ocean, to the south with the Gulf of Mexico and with the country called Mexico and to the west with the Pacific Ocean. The United States of America also prides itself with the fact that it is the fourth largest country in the whole world in terms of area and what do you think are the first three largest countries in the world when arranged in order of the size of the area? Are they Russia, Canada, and China? Present your answer as a comment after this lecture, please. Did you also know that the national administrative capital of the United States of America is Washington, D.C., which is co-extensive with the District of Columbia, and it is shortened Washington, D.C. Did you also know that the federal administrative capital region of the United States was formed or created in the year of our Lord Jesus Christ, 1790. One interesting thing, which several authorities reportedly say is the major trait or feature or characteristic of the United States of America is perhaps its great variety. They say that the physical environment of the United States of America ranges one from places which are Arctic to those which are subtropical in nature, two from regions which are moist rainforest belt to the arid desert zones, three from places which are characterized by rugged mountain peak to those which have characteristic feature of flat prairie. In addition to these, the total human population of the country is adjudged to be large by world standards. Nevertheless, its overall human population density is said to be comparatively low. The country possesses some of the world's largest urban concentrations of human beings and at at the same time, some of the most extensive expanses or land areas are virtually without human habitation. Did you know the United States of America is abbreviated USA and the name United States is abbreviated US? Just as the name of the country can be expressed in diverse ways, such as the United States of America or USA, United States or US, or simply the state of America, the state or America, 
The country is also characterized by a highly diverse population, some of whom have always been very happy as citizens, whereas others have been truly struggling for recognition right from antiquity and are still struggling for such a thing. And I'm really hopeful that one day soon, they sure will be adjudged fully human in nature as do all other humans first, and then full citizen citizenship afterwards. Ladies and gentlemen, recall the fact that the U.S. is characterized by highly diverse peoples. This characteristic trait of the country has been reported to be different from the state of affairs of a country like China, for example, which largely incorporated indigenous peoples. I hope you do remember that the terminology peoples refer to groups of people from multiple ethnic, ethnic, cultural, racial, or national backgrounds. Another key thing which is said to be special about the USA is that the country's diversity of peoples has, to a considerable extent, come from a massive and non-stop international immigration over the years. They say that there is the likelihood that there is no other country around the globe which is characterized by a higher diversity or variety of peoples. That is racial, ethnic, and cultural categories than the USA. Did you know the country is graced with the presence of the offspring of Africans who were one betrayed or betrayed and or sold by fellow Africans of antiquity, and two, those who were cruelly captured as slaves by means of deception and warfare. It is also made up of the surviving native Americans such as the American Indians, Aleuts, and the Eskimos. In addition, the national attractiveness of the USA has been considerably enriched, tested, and continuously redefined through the presence of tens of millions of immigrants who have pursued and achieved their American dream or failed in the attempt. The latter often are in the U.S. hoping for superior socio-economic and political breakthroughs than they had in the communities, countries, or continents which they chose to live. Note the designations America and Americans are often synonymous with the U.S. and its citizens citizens respectively, yet they are also used generally for Central, North, and South America combined and their citizens. Dearest Nation Builders Association of Africa, the U.S. is comparatively a young nation by global standards as indicated by several authorities. As of the year of our Lord Jesus Christ, 2020, the country was reportedly less than two and a half century or 250 years old, and that it was reportedly able to reach its size at the time only in the middle parts of the 20th century after the death and ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ. Note that the nation was established during the 18th century after the death and ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ. You might also want to take note of the fact that the U.S. was the first among all the European colonies who chose to 
decidedly disconnect themselves from its so-called motherland and truly succeeded in achieving that goal, irrespective of the deadly resistance from the forces of the motherland. The nation was reportedly the first one to have uh, been dutifully built on the idea that sovereignty rests with its citizens and not with the government. Ladies and gentlemen, authorities have indicated that during the very first century and a half of the creation of the USA, the nation was primarily preoccupied with its territorial expansion and economic growth activities, as well as with social debates. The social debate in question eventually turned into social arguments, which sooner or later triggered a civil war. Following the unfortunate civil war, a healing process was in initiated and that led to a healing period which is yet to be completed. Who among you will learn very hard, very smart and highly consistently enough to volunteer to help the US to achieve its complete healing? Remember, with enough preparation through training and a great deal of mentorship, you can do all things possible through the Lord Jesus Christ who strengthens you. Through the Lord Jesus Christ, you can afford to achieve things of eternal significance. And I know that it is possible that one day soon, it is likely that there will be that one lady or gentleman or a group of people from the continent of Africa or some other part of the globe who will successfully champion the full healing of all the offended and all wounded villages, towns, communities, cities, districts, regions, nations, and continents around the globe. In case you are willing to be the one, do well to present your comment shortly. My very dearest Nation Builders Association of the Continent of Africa, Mbaka, and beyond, experts say that the USA, which was established during the 18th century, achieved a remarkable feat just two centuries later. Before I talk about what the experts see, I would like to say what they did not find and therefore did not see. I think you might be interested in such a thing. One, they did not find and therefore do not say that the USA emerged as a heavily indebted poor country or epic some years after they secured their independence from the United Kingdom or Britain. Two, they did not find, and so they do not say that the USA had leaders who put racial, ethnic, and other interests above the national interest. Three, they did not find, and therefore do not say that the USA destroyed or sold or discontinued proper industries or factories which were initiated by a government or any leader in the name of that leader or government being over ambitious or something like that. For they did not, they did not find and therefore say that the USA set questions for any batch or batch of students to solve in any national examination, and some officials were tasked to see to it that the question should be solved for the students so that governmental official, officials would boast about the outcome of such examination. Number five, they did not find and therefore do not say that 
the USA listened to volunteers, agencies, or other people from their colonial masters or other peoples who had their own secret strategic interests and, cho and chose to ruin the progress which their country had made absent thought. Six, they did not find and therefore did not say that the opposition's or the opposition parties bought Ghana cities, euros, pounds sterling, etc., just to make an incumbent party unpopular and therefore, or thereby ruining the progress of the country. Seven, they did not find or say that the citizens of the USA chose to import things which they could produce in their own land and weakened their economy in the process. Eight, they did not find and therefore say that the USA consistently desired and depended on foreign aid or consistently lived as beggars. Nine, they did not find and so they did not say that the people of USA chose to continue to feel inferior to other races, dress like other races, act like other races, and so on and so forth. Instead, they say that in the 20th century, barely two centuries after the establishment of the nation, the country truly developed into and therefore emerged as one of the world's powers. Yes, the USA emerged as a global power. They also say that right from the period of the World War II, the country has remained one of the recognized and remarkable preeminent powers around the globe. Wow! Ladies and gentlemen, wow! Indubitably, the USA is one of the most developed countries in the whole world. They also say that the country has had the largest nominal gross domestic product or GDP right from approximately the year of our Lord Jesus Christ, 1890. They also say that the country was responsible for approximately 15% of the worldwide economy in the year of our Lord Jesus Christ, 2023. The country has, without any iota of doubt, the largest amount of wealth of any nation right from antiquity with the very highest disposable household income per capita among the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, or OECD countries. It ranks among the very highest countries in the whole world in terms of higher education, economic competitiveness, innovation, productivity, and human rights. It possesses hard power and cultural influence. And these two characteristic traits have a global reach. In addition to these, the country is a founding member of the Organization of American States, the World Bank, NATO, and the United Nations or the UN. Did you know? Did you also know that the U.S. is actually a permanent member of the United Nations Security Council. Two, two things are of interest, according to authorities. One of them is the fact that the U.S.A. has not really accepted or embraced or acknowledged this mantle of a world power without difficulty or easily. And if it has accepted it in some way or somehow, it has not always carried it willingly or enthusiastically. 
To begin with, the principles and ideologies of the founders of the USA have stood the test of time to a significant extent, and that, and that is why the country is here and thriving. The test came through the pressures and demands of the country's predominant status. Another interesting thing about the USA is that the country has not stopped giving the inhabitants great opportunities for much less personal growth, development, wealth creation, and gratification. Unfortunately, the natural resources of the country are being depleted and its physical environment are being contaminated every now and then. Another unfortunate thing is that there is never ending social economic disparity or inequality which is preserving the areas of poverty and blight. These unfortunate situations are adjudged a serious threat to the fabric of this powerful country. One of the key resources of the USA is biodiversity resources. Indeed, the US is one of the 17 mega diverse countries with large numbers of endemic species. About 17,000 species of vascular plants occur in the contiguous United States and Alaska and over 1,800 species of flowering plants in Hawaii, few of which occur on the mainland. It is also home to 428 mammal species, 784 bird species, 311 reptilians, 295 amphibians, and around 91,000 insect species. It has 63 national parks and hundreds of other federally managed parks, forests, and wilderness areas. Approximately 28% of the land of the USA is publicly possessed and federally managed. Most of the land is protected, the sum is chartered, leased, or rented for commercial use, and not more than 1% is being used for military purposes. Environmental issues which are being handled in the country include those related to air and water pollution, bio biodiversity losses, non-renewable resources, nuclear energy, logging and deforestation, as well as climate change. The idea of wilderness has reportedly helped in shaping the management of public lands right from the year of our Lord Jesus Christ, 1964, with their wilderness act. The country has an endangered species act of 1973, which provides a way to protect the various threatened and endangered species of the country as well as their habitat. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service plans and implements as well as enforces the Act. In the year of our Lord Jesus Christ 2024, the U.S. reportedly ranked 34th among 180 countries in the area of what we refer to as Environmental Performance Index or EPI. The country reportedly signed into the Paris Agreement on Climate Change in the year of our Lord Jesus Christ 2016 and has many other environmental commitments. Dear friends of Daniel Hilford, the establishment of the United States of America or simply the United States or USA or US in the late 18th century was regarded to be a remarkable successful nation building effort by many of the global authorities. The move to establish the US 
was motivated or stirred or inspired by the earnest yearning for both political and economic independence from British imperialism or colonial rule. Various authorities in the field have also dutifully informed us that the American Revolution on the table gave rise to the formation of a democratic republic and that the republic had a constitution which to a large extent did enshrine their principles of liberty, equality and popular sovereignty and thereby helping the, them to forming a cohesive identity. Ladies and gentlemen, they are still burdening the country and from the look of things, they may not stop at, they may not stop at least not any time soon. Hello, Nation Builders Association of the Continent of Africa in Baraka. There are few key technologies in the story of the USC, which might be of interest to each and every one of you. Some of them are imperialism, colonialism, revolution, liberty, equality, inequality, popular sovereignty, national identity, constitution, republic, democratic republic, democracy, freedom, independence, political independence, and economic independence. Others are principles of liberty, principles of equality, principles of popular sovereignty, and a cohesive national identity. What do these words mean in the context of this lecture in particular and in general? Proceed to conduct your own research on these terminologies and all expressions after this lecture. This is because they may be part of one of the discussions and quizzes which you may be expected and required to write on this lecture series. Hello, members of the Imbaka. There are some lessons which could be learned from the nation building story of the United States. Such lessons include one, a people or peoples which do not constitute a venerable nation, but see, to create one should earnestly desire or yearn or hanker for such a thing. Two, people who are suffering from any form of colonialism or imperialism should yearn strongly for both political and socioeconomic independence. Three, they should make themselves ready for a cohesive nationalist movement and must be willing to take their own destinies into their own hands. Four, they should expect the highest form of resistance from the imperialist or the colonialist or their oppressors or their colonial masters or any other possible foes throughout the world. In this regard, they should do everything possible to establish solid and for that matter, adequate resource security and other intelligence agencies such as the military and the police, among others. Five, they should go on to form a proper democratic republic with a planned and properly implemented constitution. Six, the constitution should be formulated in such a way that it enshrines proper principles such as those of liberty, equality, equity, and popular sovereignty. Seven, they should ensure that the people or the peoples are properly educated and engaged in the nation building process right from the beginning to ensure that they do not trivialize, trivialize or abuse the principles of popular sovereignty and liberty in particular. Proper education is the key. Eight, the people or people should do everything possible to ensure that they attain a cohesive national identity. Nine, they should work hard, smart, and consistently enough to become or to become at least one of the best nation states in terms of higher education and research achievement, economic competitiveness, innovation, productivity, and human rights.
then they should be able to promote their language and other forms of sociocultural heritage above all other cultures. And they should make positive use of all relevant talent of the citizens. 11, they should have strategic national interests and every old or new citizens should be highly prepared to put the national interest first. 12, they should have national policy strategies and programs or projects in place to guide the actions and achievement of both the elected government governance and the citizenry. 13. They should strive to achieve the very highest disposable household income per capita. 14. They should know that they can perform far better than their colonial masters and become the best country throughout the world. 15. They should avoid all kinds of inequality practices against the people who fought diligently and contributed strongly in activities which led to the attainment of the liberty. Instead, such people should be celebrated. Ladies and gentlemen, what other lessons can you learn from the story of the U.S. and in what way can you put all the lessons in categories as professionals? Again, what are some of the key things do you think have been omitted from this lecture? Dearest nation builders, please let's draw the curtain here for now. Post your lessons as well as your questions, your answers to the questions or your responses to the various assignments and other comments. And see you during the part of four. Bye.